Hi, I'm Colette here on Which Ways Today, and I'm going to be talking about creating altars. I'm going to talk about creating altars for the beginning witch, and also a few tips for those of you who have a bit more experience. I'm a big fan of intuitive altars. It's the way I've mostly always worked, although there are a few basic organizational rules that I follow. And so I'm going to talk about some of those basic organizing principles as just kind of a jumping off point for you all to create your own altars or for people who like a more organized approach. So as I've said before in videos, for those of you who watch, I feel that an altar can be as simple as a lit candle and a cloth. And the purpose of those two items on an altar in this case would be the cloth is holding space as a dedicated focal point. And the candle is lit and taking the magic that you do and moving it to the place where it can be actualized or the spirit world, depending on your viewpoint and the way you work with magic. So once you've laid out your cloth, or maybe you just have a nice table that you want to use. If you do use a cloth, it can be any color that you like, or it can be a color that resonates or symbolizes the type of magic that you're doing. Once you've done that, then you start to add relevant items. And what those relevant items are, are things that symbolize the type of magic that you're doing or create a container for the kind of magic that you're doing. I'm gonna give you a few different examples of ways you might do that. So the first one that I learned about many years ago is creating an elemental altar. And what this does is it provides a container and it also helps create a way that the magic can move out into the physical world and become reality. So what this looks like is putting on your altar things that represent each of the five elements, earth, air, fire, water, and center, which is spirit. And you can place them anywhere you want on the altar in any way, or you can be more formal and divide your altar up into quarters and have one quarter for each element with the crossroads in the center representing center or spirit. And that is often where I place my candle or a image of deity or a well that has a certain magical purpose. And this is a place that seems like it might be good to talk about cultural appropriation. In general, Europeans have used the concept of the quarters in magic for hundreds of years, and so have other people around the world. And so I think it's really important to be clear about using symbols of things that come from our background, um, whatever background you are from, and to be mindful to do some research and just make sure that you don't add things to your altar that are from other people's cultures, particularly people who have closed traditions and would prefer that people not use those items. And there's lots of information out there for you to find out what that looks like. Another simple way to organize altars is seasonal altars. And what I feel like this does is that it brings the energy of the season and the power and magic of that season through into the room and gives that boost to your magic and the workings that you're going to do. They're pretty straightforward. Again, I feel like that you can use your intuition with this however you want. However, you can also look up plant and color associations with certain seasons. My guess is that if you just 
think into yourself, you will have a pretty good idea. You can't really go wrong with just going outside and picking a bunch of things that happen to be at their peak during this season and then placing them on your altar with some lights or candles or glass. And that works really, really well. Another way to organize your altar is around the principle of the three realms, the underworld, the middle world, and the overworld. And this is a concept that's been used in several places in the world, but specifically it was used by um, my ancestors that lived in Germany, Germany, Nordic countries, and in Anglo-Saxon England. In the Celtic lands, they organized magic in lots of different ways, but one of the ways that they organized it, particularly in Ireland, was to talk about there being three gates into the magical realms, although certainly tales tell us of many other ways of accidentally or on purpose getting into the other realms. But the ones they talked about were in a triplicity were a, there being a gate in the earth, in sky and in the sea. And so they would often swear a very binding vow using the concept of, I swear this by land, sky, and sea as a way of making a very serious vow. I'm gonna talk about organizing your altar around the underworld, middle world, and overworld. And because I think that's most relevant for altar creation. And what this does is it brings the power of the three realms into your magic and lets your magic go to whatever realm or various realms that need to work on the magic that you're doing. It's a way that I really like to work with altars. So, if you're laying it out flat on a cloth or a table, the bottom third of your altar is the underworld. And that you can place items like rocks or bones or pictures of your ancestors or dirt or roots of trees or things that typically might be under the earth using dark colors for candles or glassware. The middle stretch or segment of your altar represents the human world. And that's usually where I place things that are relevant personally to me and the kind of magic that I'm going to be doing that day. I also will often place anything that's seasonally at its peak in this section. And then the top segment of my altar is representing the celestial realm. And that might be where I have um, images of sun, moon, or stars, or maybe some fairy lights, or um, sometimes candles, sometimes images of deity get put there. I personally feel like deity exists in all the different realms, so that's not usually something I place in the overworld necessarily unless I'm specifically working with an overworld deity like a star goddess, for example, or a moon deity. So you can also adapt this to a three-dimensional altar um, by having a small table or a bench, and in the underneath part, you place things that belong to the underworld. On the surface, you add things that belong in the human world that I talked about. And then you add another layer or a tall vase or jar and place things to represent the overworld. Another type of altar that you might build is a altar that is a shrine to a deity or honors a specific group, like say your ancestors. So for an altar around deity, I think it's important to have a representation of some kind of that deity. Typically, there is a place for offerings to be laid and a place for a candle or a presence light 
to be on the altar. And it can be as simple as that. Um, sometimes that's a place where people place letters to deity for with wishes or magic that they want granted or they will write um, as what my friend Larry calls praise poems to deity and place those on the altar as well. Um, you can also honor specific beings like say your ancestors at Samhain. Some people really work with specific beings like the Fey realm um, at Beltane and might create an altar around that if that calls to you. Let's talk about need-based altars or personal altars. So this is when you take objects related to the kind of need or magic that you are doing and place them on an altar. And you can do these however you want, often, especially if it's a personal working, the way that you arrange it will be very specific to you and how you feel about magic. But here's some ideas. You can take one of the templates I gave you earlier, the three world or three realm altar arrangement, the elemental altar arrangement or a deity altar arrangement, and then you can just leave some room on those altars in order to place objects around the kind of magic that you are doing. I like to place those objects near the center since that's the focus of my ritual, but you can intermingle them or you can place them around the outside edge. So what kind of objects are we talking about here? For example, I'm going to give you just a few examples. If you are trying to call in um, money or finances, if you're going through a difficult financial patch, you could, for instance, place coins or pictures of things that you need on your altar. If you are doing a love spell, you could have an altar that is dedicated to a deity of love and then place roses, for example, that are often associated with love or colors that make you feel especially happy or excited or connected or anything that you wanted to see in a love relationship. Healing, for example, you might um, take healing herbs or work with the color green as the foundational color for your altar and have those intermingled on your altar that you're working with. Um, protection, what I like to do with protection is to just add things that really make me feel solid, like rocks or um, also protective herbs like rosemary and place those on the altar. And then if I'm doing something like that, I will often add a name or a drawing of the person or object that needs love or the person or object that needs protection and place that somewhere near the center of the altar. Let's talk about um, intuitive altars. I feel like those are the best because they will most accurately represent who you are and the kind of work you're doing. I also feel like they can teach you a lot about the ways that you do magic and what works for you and what doesn't work for you. So in order to create an intuitive altar, just take a breath and center, soften your energy a little bit and try and not be in your head. Try to be a little floaty and drifty and just gravitate to what draws you, what feels shiny, what intuitively feels right. If it doesn't feel right, once you get the altar assembled, you can always take it off or rearrange it. Try not to edit. 
just grab the things that feel right to you in the moment and start placing them on the altar. Again, remember, you can edit later. Um, and so many people have different ways of doing that. I would say if you're a body worker, you might use your hands because you're really used to working with your hands as tools to guide you. But you don't have to be very specific. You can just grab what you need to grab. Now, some people ask me about, well, can you use anything in your house? And in my way of thinking, you can. Um, but some people really prefer to just have a set of dedicated tools and those are the only things they use for magic. I'll try and put a link either here um, or at the end of the video to my topic video that I did on dedicated tools versus just kind of using everything in your house that has some guidelines. Um, but Basically, in my viewpoint, you can use whatever feels right, clean it off, place it on the altar. If you've worked with magic for a while, it can still be very valuable to work with altars intuitively. And there are a few things you can even learn from that process. One is that if you've been working with magic for a while, you may sometimes have a feeling that the world has turned magical around you and that there is magic that needs to be done. And maybe you don't quite know what it is. And whenever that happens to me, one of the first things I start doing is I start trying to use my intuition to create an altar without worrying specifically about what the purpose of the altar is. And then sometimes what I can do is look at that altar once I've assembled it. And this works, again, as I said, if you have some experience. And to read it magically like you would a tarot reading. Look at the items you've placed. Look at the colors and see what kind of magic they've reminded you of. And then you can go from there and try and tune in and get some more information. If anyone needs more information about that, feel free to contact me in the comments. Um, I also feel like if you are again feeling um, that there is some magic to be done or you know there's magic to be done and you're having difficulty figuring out either how to do it or what the nature of it is, Create a simple altar and that gives you a focus point to sit and get more information about what needs to be done. And then another way to work with an altar when you have been working with magic for a while is using it as part of a long term spell working. And so when that's going on for a while, it becomes a place to place objects as you add to your spell or place objects that have information or maybe you put your journal on that altar that has the writings that you're doing about this long-term spell or working or charm that you're doing. Um, and again, it also provides you with a place to focus and sit and focus on getting information about the work that you're doing. Thanks for watching. If you like these videos, please subscribe, hit the like button. I'm loving doing them. And uh, please put some comments in the description down below. Thank you so much and be well.